there, lovely people. Welcome or welcome back to another Story Study Saturday. I'm Sammy and I'm a writer who likes to learn about writing through reading and share what I learned with you. This week I want to talk to you about the art of racing in the rain. Technically, technically this book is a partial reread for me. My mom and my brother both read it and then I was like, oh, I should read it. And I took my mom's copy, my mom's physical book, and we went on vacation and we were in this hotel room for like three days and I was like, oh, I'm going to read this book first and I'm going to read that book and I put it into a drawer in a dresser of this hotel and then immediately forgot about it and like two days later when I finished the other book I was like oh my gosh I left that book in the hotel room my mom was like oh it's fine it's not that big of a deal so sweet such a nice lady love my mom but I never read it <laughs> until now which is like probably 10 years later minimum like it's been a minute happy to finally be here I definitely remembered some stuff from it so I def I know I started it at least somewhat because I have all of these like images in my head that once I got to them I was like oh yeah I remember that I know I never finished it because I left it in a hotel room so so if you don't know what the art of racing in the rain is I will give you a quick summary Enzo a lab and possibly terrier mix, tells the story of his life as a loving dog in a family that has gone through quite a few hardships, as he learns everything his soul needs before he can move on to his next life as a human. So let's get into my thoughts. There is something so connected about seeing this entire story progress through Enzo's eyes and how he perceives the world and getting his understandings of these situations that maybe would have been clearer from a human's perspective, but from his perspective, it's all very emotionally directed rather than like facts directed. And it makes empathizing with these characters really, really easy. It really connects with the love that a dog has for their people, even as their people are like going through situations that they don't really have the time to focus their energy on their dog. But the dog always has the ability to focus their energy on their people because they don't have any of those outside stressors. The only thing that they're worried about is their people. And you really see that through Enzo and his full dedication to Denny and his family. The things that Enzo's family goes through, there's a couple of really, really sad things that they have to deal with and like process and go through, but there is so much positive of this lifespan. There's so much love and joy and just like good times during Enzo's life that we get to see from that purely like just happy dog perspective where it's not weighed down by the potential for sadness or the potential for stress the way that a lot of human experiences are and you just get to experience the things purely as they are and not with anything else tainting that and it's the right balance so there's enough joy in the story to bring you through the really really sad parts. That's a really good balance to get in any story so that it's not like work for the reader to get through. There's a light in the tunnel like there are it's dark sometimes for sure but there are lights. I think that this does a really great job of balancing those things. I think the role that TV and movies play in developing Enzo as a character is really really important and super well done because it makes a lot of sense creatively. If you think about Enzo as a child instead of as a dog that has lived a whole life because if you think like dogs are supposed to have the IQ of a three-year-old for their whole lives so let's think about him as if he were a child. He wouldn't have any outside resources. He wouldn't be going to like school to get an education or like figure out, meet other people and see how other people live their lives. He would just have what is in his home. So by Denny leaving the TV on when he goes to work, he's able to watch movies and see how pop culture people interact with each other and see what happens in movies and have reference points for different experiences of life that give him a lot more wisdom than he would have if he hadn't had TV. And I think that's a really great creative choice for one because it gives you a much more educated narrator, somebody who has more reference points in the world because you're telling it from this dog's perspective. And by having something that they can reference, like it's like this movie where these actors did this thing. You have that and it's really, really helpful for understanding certain situations. And there's a scene where he's not part of the experience at all, but there's a court situation. So he's like, I know what the probably, maybe, possibly happened because I've watched Law and & Order. And then we get 
to know what could have happened during that situation because Enzo has enough knowledge of how the whole thing works to be able to tell us a very dramatic, in comparison to the other things that happened, story about what happened and give us that information so we don't feel like we're missing out on anything. And two, it makes Enzo so much more endearing because he's just like got, he's just making movie references and like quoting like TV shows and like talking about how he knows all these actors and all this stuff because they, he's seen them on TV and it's just so crazy to like give Enzo this personality that comes from his knowledge of the TV and like this pure ignorance of sorts going into watching TV. He's got this personality that he would not have been able to have without having access to the TV. And that is a creative choice that was really, really effective in this storytelling because it feels like something real. I don't think my dog thinks the way that Enzo thinks. Could it be because we don't let him watch cable TV? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So what do I think could be improved? There are some moments that just like give me the ick where Enzo is describing Danny's wife in a way that is like so it's like weirdly sexualized like it's it's sexualizing her but from a way that's not using informed language like he, it's so it's not a way that I would think a dog would describe a human and the fact that they did it on multiple occasions made me super uncomfortable I don't understand why he wouldn't describe Eve the same way that he would describe Denny another couple in there that's a gay couple and he describes the husband as like the wife but also a man and like he he calls him Mike's wife because that's like his his base knowledge. So I don't understand why he wouldn't describe Eve the same way that he describes Denny. And that makes me super uncomfortable. So I would definitely take those out of the story for sure because they're just like, Ugh. Something else that bothered me was that the story starts in chapter one at a, it's like a prologue of sorts where it puts you at the end, at the very beginning, and then chapter two takes you to the beginning of Enzo's life, and then you go chronologically the rest of the way. And we start in a spot that's very clearly like a spot that you know should be coming back, and then it doesn't end there. Like the end of the book is not in, at all similar to the beginning where I'm not sure why. You could have just as easily put what actually happens at the end because I think what happens at the end is better than what happens at the beginning, the end beginning. And you could have just had that all be the same. That could have been a revision. Like you could have known, I wanna start at the end and then go from the beginning and then get to the end and be like, wow, I've reread my writing and the beginning is different than the end now, even though the end, the beginning is supposed to be the end. So maybe make those connect. This is something that was done really well in Kindred and not really well in this book where you get that like glimpse into the future, but you don't get it back. You don't end up back there. It doesn't make any sense the way that it's written. So what can we learn from this story? For one, we can learn about telling a story from a unique perspective and staying with that one perspective. Enzo has to be told everything, but Enzo tells us everything, but we don't have to hear Enzo being told everything to know everything. Like it's not, you don't have to bounce back and forth. So like you don't have to have a character say, hey, I did A, B, and C to know that A, B, and C happened. That is something that I've seen in other books that has really bothered me. For example, The War of Two Queens. That one, very much so, had a lot of like, hey, I'm gonna tell you all of these things that the reader already knows. But this does a really good job of having one perspective and having that one perspective tell everything without having the reader have to be informed over multiple occasions on how things transpired. We just get it once and it's very effectively told that one time. It's also a really great example of like emotional flows in the story where you get the right kind of language to empathize with characters and you get a main character who empathizes empathizes with everyone and is able to communicate the feelings going on more effectively than probably the characters themselves. And that's something that I think is really unique to this story, whether that's because of the style of writing, because the narrator is a dog or just like dumb luck. I think this is a really great example of having that empathy really easily accessible for all of the characters in the story. It's also a good example of a uh, very niche knowledge expanding to fill out the story. 
This is called The Art of Racing in the Rain. A lot of the story is based around racing and like concepts, mantras, etc. from racing, about racing. So it's, it's really able to expand that one niche topic into the connector through the whole story and it's very well done as well. But that is all that I've got for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It'll really help me out. If you have any books that you would like me to check out and do a story study on, I would be happy to. Just leave me a comment down below. Have you read The Art of Racing in the Rain? Do you have any, do you have any stories about it? Do you, did you, did you cry? Because I cried a couple of times. If you don't want to miss any of my uploads, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell next to it. I'm here every Tuesday and Saturday for Writing Tip Tuesdays and Story Study Saturdays, so I will see you guys on Tuesday for Writing Tip Tuesday.